Welcome everyone to 6.7 hyperbolic functions. Here today we have some brand new functions, right, that you probably have never encountered before called hyperbolic functions. So we need to discover what are these things, what are some properties of them, and then finally we'll do some calculus. Let's get to it. So the first thing I suppose I should tell you, what are the hyperbolic functions? So the first one is called hyperbolic sine. Sometimes it's pronounced as cinch. Uh, and it is this e to the x minus e to the negative x divided by 2. Hyperbolic cosine, which is sometimes called cosh, is e to the x plus e to the negative x over 2. And then hyperbolic tangent, and kind of all of the others uh, follow the, the exact same definitions that you would expect. So hyperbolic sine divided by hyperbolic co cosine. Hyperbolic cosecant is going to be 1 divided by hyperbolic sine. Hyperbolic secant is 1 divided by hyperbolic cosine. Ugh. And then hyperbolic cotangent is hyperbolic cosine divided by hyperbolic sine. If I forget an H, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll do my best, but these do not come as natural to me. Uh, so let's actually see what these hyperbolic functions look like. So the claim is hyperbolic sine is kind of made up of two pieces. It's made up of uh, e to the x over 2, and then it's made up of negative uh, e to the negative x over 2. So I'm going to write this as 1 half e to the x, and uh, let's see, this negative e to the negative x over 2. Actually, let me rewrite this. I want negative 1 half e to the negative x. And so if you add these together, you would get hyperbolic uh, sine. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and sketch these two graphs on their own, and then we're going to try to add them together. So this is what 1 half e to the x looks like. It looks like e to the x, but it's just it now it goes through 1 half uh, on the y-axis. And now let's draw a negative 1 half e to the negative x. So it's going to go through uh, the point negative 1 half, or 0, negative 1 half. And it's going to look something like this, right, because e to the negative x has been uh, flipped. Uh, so this is what negative 1 half e to the negative x looks like. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to try to add these things, right? And so maybe a good first step uh, is that, well, as we are on the right-hand side, right, on the right-hand side, uh, this negative 1 half e to the negative x is very small. It's negative and small, and it's going to get, so therefore, cinch, hyperbolic sine, is going to get closer and closer to this 1 half e to the x. And likewise, on the left-hand side, this 1 half e to the x is very small and positive. Uh, so when we add these together, it's going to be getting closer and closer to this negative 1 half e to the negative x. We'll also note that hyperbolic sine at 0 is going to be equal to, and if we just plug this into our formula, we can get out 0. Also, you can see we're going to have 1 half plus negative 1 half. So that's going to give us zero. So this is something, uh, this is a quick sketch of what hyperbolic sine actually looks like. Now hyperbolic cosine, again, its pieces are made out of 1 half e to the x and 1 half e to the negative x. So now notice they're both positive 1 halves. So let's try to sketch these really quick. So both of them are going to go through 1 half here on the y-axis. And when you have e to the x, uh, as that gets bigger and bigger, x gets bigger and bigger, uh, e to the x gets bigger and bigger. And then 1 half e to the negative x is going to look something like this, right? Again, it's been reflected across this y-axis. And now, so hyperbolic cosine, 1 half plus 1 half is going to be 1, right? Uh, and as you get closer and closer uh, to negative infinity or positive infinity, it's going to be getting closer and closer to these uh, the bigger curves, right? Because those other ones are quite small. Positive, but small. So hyperbolic cosine looks something like this. Again, this is just a quick sketch. Okay, so with these definitions of hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, uh, the claim is that they have some good properties just like sine and cosine themselves. So first of all, 
A hyperbolic sine is also an odd function. So that says if you have a negative on the inside, you can rip that out and you have negative uh, hyperbolic sine of x. Hyperbolic cosine is an even function, which means you can kind of forget about negatives. How nice. Uh, and then for hyperbolics, it's not cos hyperbolic cosine squared x plus hyperbolic squared sine x bleh, is equal to 1, but it's actually minus. So it's hyperbolic cosine squared of x minus hyperbolic sine squared of x is equal to 1. And then finally, if you divide through uh, by hyperbolic cosine squared, then uh, the formula becomes 1 minus hyperbolic tangent squared is equal to hyperbolic secant squared of x. <clears throat> Hoo-ah. So let's, the claim is, right, there's a relationship between sine and hyperbolic sine, cosine and hyperbolic cosine. And the relationship is kind of the curves in which they live on. So our favorite ellipse is really a circle, right? And it's probably going to be the unit circle. Our unit circle is our favorite circle, probably, of them all. And it has the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. And so this is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. And we know originally sine and cosine were defined to be uh, points on this unit circle, right? So that the cosine of t is supposed to be the point uh, when you have angle t uh, that lives on this unit circle. And then sine is supposed to be the y value. So we have the x value and the y value. Now, amongst our other quadratic curves out there lives the hyperbola, right? And hence hyperbolic. So the hyperbola uh, maybe a favorite hyperbola out there could be given by x squared minus y squared equals 1. And I'm going to go through quickly how to sketch a hyperbola. So first of all, 1 and negative 1 are both points on this. Go ahead, check, plug it in. If you have uh, x is 1 or negative 1 and y is 0, it works out. Uh, also, you can solve and you can see that actually that this has asymptotes at y equals x and y equals negative x. Again, I'm doing this quite quickly. I'm not doing a big review of hyperbolas themselves. And so hyperbolas, the claim is, they look something like this. Nice, interesting funnel-type shape here. Another like piece of an hourglass. And so the claim is, a point on the hyperbola, and it's the right half of the hyperbola, this is actually hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. And oops, actually, uh, I keep on flipping back between these things. I don't know, maybe you want t's here. This isn't actually the x value there. It's some t value, and it's not exactly the angle. It has something to do with area. I invite you to read the book uh, to figure out exactly what t is. But the big thing is that it's supposed to be a point on the right half of the hyperbola. So that's kind of how these things are related. And you can see then it's very obvious that it has to satisfy hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is equal to 1 because we have x squared minus y squared equals 1. All right. Now let's move into the calculus of this all. The claim is that these uh, hyperbolic trig functions, hyperbolic functions, are closely related to the derivatives of uh, trigonometric functions. So the derivative of sine cinch is indeed cosh. But then the derivative of cosh is not negative cinch. It's actually positive cinch, or positive hyperbolic sine. The derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant squared. The derivative of hyperbolic cosecant is negative hyperbolic cosecant times hyperbolic cotangent. The derivative of hyperbolic secant is not quite secant tangent, but it's actually negative hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tangent. And then the derivative of hyperbolic cotangent is negative uh, hyperbolic cosecant squared. All right, I think that's probably a good place to stop. Let's stretch our legs, and then when we come back, we'll try some example problems. See you then.